Hi, my name's Sarah. Um, I'm having a homework bound day and I'm doing my visibility homework. So uh, the turning point I'm going to talk about is two things that happened broadly at the same time in my life. Uh, one was having children, I became a parent, and then around about that time, um, about two thirds of the coral on the Great Barrier Reef bleached. Um, and I'm a reef scientist and that's something that I hold really dear to my heart and so that had quite a big effect on me. Um, I felt like I really wanted to act for the environment but at the same time I felt completely impotent to do so uh, insofar as I was in the early stages of parenthood and, and most people who've had children would know that really those first few, few years when you've got young children it's about survival and so um, I'm an academic um, and working in academia it can seem like quite an egotistical career in the sense that your personal worth as a researcher it really boils down to one or two things um, uh, how much money you can bring in in terms of research grants and also um, what prestigious papers you can write in, in different journal publications so um, something that came out in my LSI what on the self-assessment was uh, this dichotomy that I've got between uh, competitive and approval sectors. So my mentor sort of helped me to interpret that as kind of a mentality that looks at I have to win to be approved of and I think that that's really uh, for me a function of my career as an academic and the climate I find myself in because I'm constantly competing against other academics for grant schemes and funds and who can, who can write more papers and have a longer publication list and that sort of thing. Um, this was a turning point in time for me because I, I found it quite stressful that I, I personally felt that I should be donning a superwoman cape and going out there and uh, saving the Great Barrier Reef but at the same time the reality was that most days I wasn't really managing to get out of my pyjamas and I was just changing nappies and, and sleeping um, and I also felt that I was really lagging behind in my career at that time. This represents quite a common turning point for a lot of female academics in the sense that there's what's known as the scissor effect where you see that um, women are quite present in academic environments as undergraduate students and postgrad student students but um, when you get into those early uh, academic career stages there's a sudden uh, what's called the leaky pipeline where there's a sudden drop in uh, the numbers of women at those higher um, career stage high level career stages um, and one thing that often gets blamed for that is uh, the presence of children and starting families. So the decision I made was that I was going to stop uh, rushing my career and putting so much blood, sweat and tears into grant applications and writing papers and instead I was going to dwell, uh, dwell more on um, the benefits that children bring to my career of which I realised now there are, there are quite a few um, and I was also going to take a longer term viewpoint around uh, my aspirations and really reflect on where I could see myself wanting to be 10, 20 years from now um, and uh, focus on that. So my big goal I decided was uh, to have a sustainable, rewarding and healthy work-life balance and I've begun to work from home more and find different ways to channel my energy around being an environmental scientist and making a difference in the world. So I've uh, looked at doing more environmental advocacy. Um, I do quite a lot of speaking on behalf of the Australian Coral Reef Society, writing submissions and media articles. I also help to set up something called the WICG Network, which is the Women in Coastal Geoscience and Engineering Network. It's been, uh, we launched it the day that my uh, second son was born and it's now got something like 350 international members go working. Um, uh, the results are that I now feel uh, much less stressed on the, the home and the work front. Um, I've stopped sort of pursuing publications and grants so vigorously, uh, but funnily enough now that I've stopped pursuing them so much they've started coming to me, so um, that's been quite a nice outcome. And um, my work has become uh, much more rewarding as well because I think I've spent time thinking about this longer term vision um, and what it means to me and how, can I, how I can relate it to my own personal values. So some of the aspirational insights that have come out of my story would be um, that taking a longer term view has really helped me to oversee uh, some of the immediate preoccupations that um, I uh, encounter on a day to day basis and it's given me a really clear vision uh, of something to aim for and I don't know if anybody read that uh, book uh, Playing Big by Tara Moore but she had a really good exercise to do in there that helped me to see uh, a broad term vision of what I want to be where you think about your future self and the other um, insight uh, I've 
sort of reflect on is that aligning my career decisions against my own uh, personal values has been something that's really resonated for me and made me uh, get a lot more personal satisfaction out of the things that I've chosen to pursue in my career. Um, and that's about all from me. Thanks for listening.